Good evening from San Ignacio Town. With the 9 o'clock news, I am Patrick Jones. In the headlines, Salvador National charged for blackmail. Stan Creek to choose its Queen of the Bay on Saturday and Orange Walk Rock Band to perform in San Ignacio Town this weekend. Stay tuned for details of these and other stories coming up after these messages. Kobe Entertainment and Princess Casino San Ignacio brings you the next launch, 6th anniversary. It's going down on Saturday, July 30th and we're going hard. Featuring the rulers of the West, the mighty Cloud9 sounds, Eclipse sounds, and all the way out of Cayman Islands, the juggling machine, Selector, Selector Renegade. Dropping bombs all night. Early entrance is a must. Enough giveaways and a door prize for a lucky winner. Next launch, 6th anniversary party. Saturday, July 30th, inside the next launch. Come prepared to party on another level. Poured by Kobe Entertainment, Presidente, The Wine House, San Ignacio Hotel, Travelers Belizean and Fiesta Rum, Vinhung, Mike's Place, and Princess Casino San Ignacio. The Men's World Championship Qualification Tournament for 2016 will be hosted in Belize and the national channel only on Central TV and Internet is going to be bringing all the action to you starting August the 14th to the 20th at St. Catherine's Primary Gym. This will be a historic event in Belize, so it will be Belize, Panama, Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala and Dominican Republic will participate in a seven-day tournament, three matches per day to determine the two qualifying teams to the continental round. The top two teams of this tournament qualify to the continental round for which the top five team goes to the world championship to be held in Italy, Bulgaria. So it is the male national qualifiers live on the national channel only on central TV and internet. Tune in. Would you like to know more about the flora and fauna of Belize? Do you enjoy gardening and need some tips? Then tune in to The Garden Show with Belize Botanic Gardens every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, only on the National Channel. With all the bad press that the Belize Police Department has been getting in the last couple of weeks, Tonight, there is some good news coming out of the Benke Viejo del Carmen Police Station. Authorities have worked quickly and efficiently to crack an extortion scheme that was targeting business people in the Cayo District. As a result, Salvadoran National Carlos Roman Amador Diaz was today formally arraigned on a charge of blackmail when he appeared in the San Ignacio Magistrates Court. The acting officer commanding Benke Viejo del Carmen Police, Inspector Stanley Bowden, told TNC News how the cops collared Diaz and cracked the case. On Monday, the 25th of July 2016, sometime around 11.30 a.m., uh, we received a complaint from a resident of Benke Viejo area. Um, this person is also a farm manager in the Benke Viejo area. Um, that he received a letter from one of his employees and upon him opening the envelope, it's a one of the airmail envelope, the, he noticed that the writing of the letter was in Spanish. Uh, he read the letter and he noticed that they were demanding $5,000 from each farm to be delivered on the 26th, which is the following year, 26th of July 2016. Um, at the junction of Calla Creek and the George Price Highway. Um, 
the letter requested that the money be delivered at dark. Um, we immediately conduct an investigation into this matter. Uh, several witnesses were brought in and interviewed, um, which led us to the detention of one Carlos Carlos Ramon Amador Diaz, a Salvadorian national who at the time is were living in Cala Creek. Um, he has since been detained. Upon his detention, um, some documents was as well found on him with similar handwriting to the one on the letter. Um, he, while he was interviewed, he confessed that he was the one who delivered the letter and he was the one who wrote, who wrote the letter. A uh, subsequent search was conducted at his residence where a composition book was also found with additional writings and um, had missing page. Um, the book as well has since been confiscated by the police and those documents have been taken to the National Forensic to be analyzed. Um, I must say that we have since been on high alert since the incident in San Ignacio at ABC store. Uh, since then we have also seen a letter from ABC store which in my view it, the writing is similar as well to the one from ABC store. So after we consulted with the director of public prosecution office we were directed to lay charges of blackmail against Mr. Diaz. According to Inspector Bowden, the police prosecutor was instructed to object to bail for Diaz as he is a flight risk. And because police in San Ignacio town are also interested in, in investigating him for a similar case that was reported a week ago. At this time, um, there is no indication that or he did not implicate anybody else in his statement um, that he is working with. So we don't have any additional evidence to see that he has um, any other companion that he is operating with at this time. I'm not sure up to what date, but he has um, this, he's legal within the, with, within Belize. Um, he's here along with his wife and I believe two two child. In terms of the documents found with him, did did he carry any legal documents that uh, entitled him to be? Yes, he has a Salvadorian passport and um, he also has a, a stamp, I believe a, I'm not sure if it's a temporary permit to reside in Belize and he is also the holder of a Belize driver's license issued from Benke Viejo. That's legally issued. Well, I cannot say what documents he produced to the Benke Viejo Town Council um, traffic section to obtain a driver's license. The charge is uh, blackmail. Will there be additional charges? Um, from our side, well, we would have to wait. We, our file at this time has almost been completed. Um, that will be forwarded to the Director of Public Prosecution for further advice. And they will direct if any additional charge will be brought against Mr. Diaz. From the Bank of Ejo del Carmen uh, Police's point of view, Will you be asking for an automatic uh, remand for him? Yes, we will definitely ask for that he be remanded. Um, because one, the, there is still ongoing investigation and um, he is also a flight risk, he is not a Belizean. And I don't believe that he has any asset in Belize to say that he will not go because he has something that ties him to Belize. So we will definitely ask, and, and our prosecutor have already been instructed that he are to object to bail. Inspector Bowden says anyone who believes that they are being extorted or blackmailed should make a report as soon as possible to the nearest police station. As for the case in the Benke Vejo del Carmen jurisdiction, Inspector Bowden believes there are no others pending. We're not expecting it, but if anybody have received any um, letter of extortion, well, in Belize, extortion refers to 
there is a charge of extortion, but it's mostly against public officers or government officials. Um, in other countries, other, uh, the region like Guatemala, Mexico, um, Salvador, there is a charge of extortion. But if anybody in the Benkevi whole area have received any letter pertaining to any demand for monies, um, they can come forward and we'll definitely conduct an investigation. But at this time, we don't have any additional information in respect to any other person receiving any letter. As I mentioned earlier that um, the incident in San Ignacio, um, right after that, we went around and we spoke to the business community. Um, <clears throat> I know the Chinese, um, after the incident, the the Chinese community were also informed by the president of the of their association, um, and we did make sure that they were informed and that if any other person have any information or receive any letter, we are welcome them to come forward so that we can do, conduct an investigation. Police in Benkevejo or Carmen believe that they have enough evidence to successfully prosecute this case. Yes, we believe that we have cracked the case. Um, we, from the incept, the person that was that received the letter at mile 71, I believe, when he was stopped, the employee, um, and after our interviews with the employee, we know that the employee was not the one who wrote the letter. Uh, the employee was more than willing he cooperated with us um, yesterday we conducted an identification parade and mr diaz was posit positively identified <coughs> what um, is the police doing or what can the police do to ensure the safety one of the person who got the letter to uh, your, your, your prime witness who helped to identify uh, mr diaz and three, anybody else who um, might feel fearful that, that they are at risk from this, this matter? Um, Sir Jones, in respect to, to that, uh, one of the reasons why I'm not disclosing the name of the farms nor the manager is, one is for security reason. However, those information will still has to come out because it has to go before the court. Um, in respect to the, the witness, the Witness is also a Guatemalan. My understanding is that he is presently working at the farm for the past three years. He lives in in Guatemala as well. Um, and the law provides that statements in respect to the foreigner be taken in the presence of a justice of the peace. That in event that any time Mr. the witness does not or feel free and does not want to come back to Belize, the statement can still be tendered into evidence. Right? We know that we have a witness protection program. However, um, to run a witness protection program is very costly. And um, what we'll try our best to try to protect our witness so that the case can go through and we end up with a conviction. Mr. Diaz has been charged. Um, what about his wife? his children, or could they be considered co-conspirators in this? At this time, um, we have no kind of evidence to say that, um, that, that his wife or his kids are involved. I believe that his wife, um, I was made to understand, didn't even know what was happening. Um, however, based on, like I said, the file will be compiled and sent to the Director of Public Prosecution Office and based on their advice, if we need to take a handwriting specimen from them as well, then that will be done. You have uh, taken uh, Mr. Diaz into custody, he has been charged. You have documents you say you took from his home and from his person. Are there any other assets or belongings of Mr. Diaz that is in the custody of the police department? We have the taxi in custody, however, he is not the owner of the taxi. My understanding is that he rents a taxi, the taxi belongs to someone else. TNC News acknowledges the efforts of the Benkevejo del Carmen police in solving this case, and we commend them for a job well done. 
Prime Minister Dean Barrow today hosted a press conference in Belize City to discuss a number of national issues. But the main issue that took up most of the PM's conversation with the media today had to do with William Danny Mason, the alleged mastermind of the kidnapping and horrific murder of Llewellyn Lucas. Viewers will recall that Mason was arrested a couple of weeks ago after Lucas's severed head was found in his vehicle in Belmopan. The murder of Llewellyn Lucas aside, Mason is also linked to allegations of illicit activities and Minister of National Security John Saldivar, Deputy Prime Minister Patrick Faber and other ministers of government have acknowledged socializing at Mason's Belmopan home on different occasions. When he addressed the situation today, Prime Minister Barrow said that while it looks bad for his administration, there has not been any material evidence provided to him that would necessitate him taking action against his cabinet colleagues. Here is some of what the Prime Minister had to say with footage courtesy with television. Let me be absolutely clear. I accept that the optics of this situation is bad. Moving beyond optics though, I have not been provided with any material to suggest that any minister did anything that could be considered improper from the point of view of the bar of impropriety that would oblige the sort of action ask about that would act as the sort of trigger you describe have not been provided with that sort of evidence I repeat the situation is clearly still evolving but so far what is obvious is that Minister Saldiva, other ministers, police officers, other politicians, not just from the ruling party, were all taken in by this Mr. Mason. Members of the society, business persons, the pastor who was so tragically, heinously, horrifically murdered, it appears, was an associate of Mr. Mason. So right across the spectrum, this Mr. Mason was able to con people. While ministers have to be held perhaps to a higher standard, they're human beings. You can have a neighbor, you can have an acquaintance that on the face of it is somebody that you ought not to hold at arm's length and it turns out that the person does something that you would never have imagined the person capable of. So please, we've got to see this thing in the wrong. I therefore will conclude my answer to your question by trying to restate as shortly as possible the position. The acquaintanceship, the association, especially through this Bandits football team in which it appears Mr. Mason was some sort of a part owner or, 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 or co-sponsor, that association has, as events now turn out, that association has had extremely worrying ramifications, implications for Minister Saldiva. 
it may well call into question the fact that he did not discover sooner than he did that Mr. Mason was not what he represented himself to be. And that is the sort of thing for which he's paying a huge political price. Question of his ministry apart. That is the sort of thing for which my administration is paying a huge political price. But I repeat that as of now, I have not been provided with any material that would cause me to feel that a summary decision must be made with respect. I'll come right out and, and, and answer your question squarely with respect to, to the removal of a John Saldiva from the cabinet. We've not reached that point at this juncture. Today's press conference by the Prime Minister was held at the Biltmore Hotel in Belize City. You're watching the 9 o'clock news. We will have more of the day's stories for you right after these messages. Make sure you cut this riverside good now. Knuckles down, I want it. And make sure I go see the river straight from the house and I want one nicely area where we could picnic, you know? Then when you're done, you could start from the hill over there, so. See, I want it clean, clean, clean. So we could plant. Yes, Pa. Hey, neighbor, I did hear correct? You did peel by the riverside and over there, so, on that hill? Man, that will happen to you? You don't know about side erosion? You don't know it's important for left for and leave buffer by the riverside with some trees and some shrubs? Buffer for what? Buffer for what? Boy, you see what they do? When it rain or when it dry dry, the side wash away or turn loose, loose, loose and wash away right in at the river and cause pollution. And if the side wash away, then you want to lose some land too. And that is the same thing on the hillside. When the rain cause the roots and the trees and the grass not they to hold the soil together, it just wash right down and come by your house like a landslide. What? Fit true? Yes, man. I know they tell you no lie. And how you know this? From the Department of the Environment people. When they may come inspect one illegal dump. Oh, I may think them people only they look for them big resort. I never know that they look for all of that. Oh, yes, man. They look for everything for the environment. Watch ya. They only help with the care of things, you know. But that we fit the care of things. Cause when things happen, that all that we get affected. Remember where they say happen? Why Kendall Bridge gone? That mistake of all that ain't big tree were cut down and drop into the river. You want it happen again? Alright. Help, help us protect, protect the, the environment, environment and our lives. lives. Hola, mi nombre es Vania Pat y les invito a la gran final del certamen Miss Queen of the West que se llevará a cabo en Sacred Heart Auditorium el 20 de agosto. No se lo fallen, comenzará a las 7 p.m. en punto. Kendra Borland, 18 years old. Rosanna Romero, 20 years old. Tamika Armstrong, 20 years old. Maria Pat, 18 años de edad. Jem Lyons, 20 years old. Y también les quiero invitar para el grand launching of the September celebration calendar que se llevará a cabo el 6 de agosto en el Welcome Center y comenzará a las 6 p.m. en punto. No se lo fallen. Artistas como Ernestine estarán presentes. Ernestine, and they call me so queen. I love to shake up my waistline and drop it to the baseline. Welcome back to the 9 o'clock news. After being dormant for over a decade, the Stan Creek District Queen of the Bay pageant is back. 
eight young ladies will take to the stage on Saturday night in Dangriga Town to see who will be crowned Queen of the Bay for Stan Creek and get to represent their district at the national pageant to be held in Belize City. The 2016 Stan Creek Queen of the Bay is being organized by pageant director Sharima Gite, who wore the crown in 2004. Here is a look at the contestants for tomorrow night's pageant. I am 24 years old, Kadisha Agustin, proudly representing Miss Jumps of Alves I am 18 years old, Marilyn Mora, proudly representing the Pomona Village, and I am Miss my name is Juana Mesa. I am 21 years old and I represent Sarawi Village. My name is Joanne Marin and I'm 19 years old and I'm proudly representing Dangraga Town. I am hailing from beautiful Independence Village. I am 22 year old Shani Alonzano. My name is Cristalyn Castillo. I am 18 years old and I'm representing the Caribbean Sea. From the beautiful village of Pomona. I am Geraldine Kamisha Hernandez, 19 years of age, proudly representing the city of Belize. My name is Lou Lopez. I am 18 years old and I will be representing the Banana Hill. I would love to be Miss Stein Creek because it would be it would give me the greatest pleasure to say that I am representing my district and also the village where I come from. I want to be Miss Stein Creek for sure. I don't know what wonderful the pageant is and also appreciate my quality. Being Miss Stein Creek, it's a very prestigious title and I wish to make a positive difference in the youth today in your life. I want to be Miss Stein Creek because I want to show young people especially young females, that absolutely anything is possible. I entered this pageant basically for the experience and the exposure that came come along with it. I mean, having the opportunity to associate myself with a bunch of girls that have the same goal and aspirations as I have, it's definitely a dream come true. I want to focus more on Dangriga, becoming a better place, and with this title, more and more people will see me what I want to do. It would be a great honor for me to become Miss Stan Creek. I want to be Miss Stan Creek because I believe that it will be a great experience and I believe that it will look into the control of my community. A symbol of love is the queen of the reigning queen of the bay, Fallon Tiana Kane is from Dangriga town and while beauty will take to the stage on Saturday in Dangriga in San Ignacio town rock music will be the featured entertainment legacy rock band from Orange Rock town will be at the Sacred Heart Auditorium for this special concert TNC News spoke with the promoter Jude Urbina this Saturday is the it's all about the um, the mana show it's a tribute concert to Mana by Legacy Rock Band. The band is originally from Orange Rock, so we don't want people to think that it's the real Mana coming because we're not promoting any file show. It's an original band from Belize, but they will be only be performing live um, hits by Mana. So, How can people get tickets to attend the show? Well, tickets are, are already on sale from like two, three weeks ago um, at um, Bismillah's store here in San Ignacio, the Shell gas station and hold his place and in San and in Santa Elena you could get it at CP gas station and Benke at Wingstop and Belmpan Wingstop as well. Now this isn't the first presentation by Legacy uh, presenting Mana. Will there be future shows? Well based on the request by people especially in the Benke area we are planning to take it to Benke next and um, possibly in San Pedro. Give me an indication of uh, what was the motivating factor behind you deciding to, to do these Amana concerts. Well, just I've been around the band 
a lot and I've noticed the, the talent that they, they, they possess, right? And I support everything Belizean and I just decided like, you know, I've already done international shows with, with um, international um, reggae and dancehall artists. So I said, decided, you know, I want to keep it local this time and just bring something different to Kayo. Yeah, you know, like I said, we have done it in the north and it's it was a success. So we just wanted to bring it across this side of the, um, the country, right? So, who should attend this concert? Well, everyone, because it's a family-oriented concert. Kids are allowed, so you know, bring out the entire family. Enough security. You know, we have police officers in full attendance, so it will be a safe and fun show. And we're really inviting. It's a family event, you know, so it's just not only for adults. Kids are allowed, just $10 for kids, and, you know, the, um, the general admission pre-sale tickets are $20, 25 at the gate, you know. Um, reserve are only, is only um, $30, and the VIP is 150 Now, when people come to the Sacred Heart Auditorium on Saturday, what can they expect? <laughs> I think a lot of people will, will leave from here speechless because, like I said, it's months preparation. As you can see, we've been here since yesterday. It's like three days setting up. I mean, the stage, the lights, all the lighting, you know, we got it from Miami and pyrotechnics, all kind of things. So it will be a, a mighty show, definitely. And while the organizers promise an unforgettable show, one of the musicians, Brony Mask, says the band will ensure that the audience gets its money's worth this Saturday night. The band is called Legacy. Um, it's probably one of the first and premier rock bands in all of Belize. Um, I personally have uh, been with them since around 2007. Um, but the band itself, Lito Rabina, he's well known all across the country and the band Tonight, what you can expect to see would be, we're doing a MANA tribute show. So all the music will be from MANA, all right? But we're not just a MANA tribute band. Uh, we have done tributes as well to the Beatles, uh, Bon Jovi, and other things. What sets Legacy apart from uh, other groups within this genre? Professionalism. Um, and raw talent. Um, I can't say enough about the musicians. Um, I, you have to come out and see it for yourself because the way they put together the show, I mean, you're going to have, uh, besides the sound and the lights, a uh, little bit of fire, smoke. Um, it's, it's a really good show. And uh, compared to the way other shows are put together, I'm sure you'd be more than impressed. With what does it take to keep a group like Legacy uh, together doing all those professional presentations? Well, camaraderie, um, passion, and just love for what you do. It's not about anything except the music, all right? And when you're together with people this long, you become like family. And family is what keeps things together and that's what it's all about. Gates for tomorrow night's concert at the Sacred Heart Auditorium open at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. This is the news on the national channel. We will take a look at the weather after these messages. The Men's World Championship Qualification Tournament for 2016 will be hosted in Belize and the national channel only on Central TV and Internet is going to be bringing all the action to you starting August the 14th to the 20th at St. Catherine's Primary Gym. This will be a historic event in Belize, so it will be Belize, Panama, Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala and Dominican Republic will participate in a seven-day tournament, three matches per day to determine the two qualifying teams to the Continental Round. The top two teams of this tournament qualify to the continental round for which the top five team goes to the world championship to be held in Italy, Bulgaria. So it is the male national qualifiers live on the national channel only on Central TV and Internet. Tune in. Everybody can see Kobe.
Entertainment and Princess Casino San Ignacio brings you the next launch, 6th anniversary. It's going down on Saturday, July 30th and we're going hard featuring the rulers of the West, the mighty Cloud9 sounds, Eclipse sounds and all the way out of Cayman Islands, the juggling machine, Selector, Selector Renegade. Dropping bombs all night. Early entrance is a must. Enough giveaways and a door prize for a lucky winner. Next launch, 6th anniversary party. Saturday, July 30th, inside the next launch. Come prepare to party on another level. Poured by Kobe Entertainment, Presidente, The Wine House, San Ignacio Hotel, Travelers Belizean and Fiesta Rum, Vinhung, Mike's Place, and Princess Casino San Ignacio. Improvements in the weather are expected this weekend. Here is the forecast for Saturday. That is a look at the weather with information provided by forecaster Francisca Wellington at the Belize Weather Bureau. To summarize the news, we take a look at the main points again. Salvadoran National charged for blackmail. Stan Creek to choose its Queen of the Bay on Saturday and Orange Walk Rock Band to perform in San Ignacio Town this weekend. With the headlines, we end this edition of the 9 o'clock news. As we head out this Friday evening, we hope that you and your family will have a safe and an enjoyable weekend. Join us back here at the news desk on Monday for another broadcast. Thank you for joining us. I am Patrick Jones. Have a good evening and a good night. <laughs>